Well, we begin with our Shannon Lilly, who takes a look at how policing in Central Virginia has changed since Floyd's death, why social justice advocates say reform was necessary, and the toll it has taken on law enforcement. Shannon? Well, Bill, since May 25th of 2020, laws have been passed changing the way policing is done here in our state. Now, we spoke with some people who say that's progress, but we still need to do more, while others say we're moving too fast. On the anniversary of George Floyd's murder at the hands of Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. One year ago today. Well, Lawrence you know, West, founder of BLM RVA, remembers how he felt watching the tape. Just a lot of frustration, a lot of um, hurt. Months later, Governor Northam would go on to sign multiple new laws to reform policing in the Commonwealth. I think that, um, you know, there's been some first steps. Including laws banning chokeholds and the creation of the Marcus Alert system. But other controversial reform legislation, like qualified immunity, was voted down in the Virginia General Assembly in the fall. As for civilian review boards... They say that we may, that we could. In the option. Lawmakers set the framework for allowing investigative citizen review boards to oversee and look into police complaints, but didn't give any guidance on how it would play out. And it's been a mixed bag. We had a snag, couldn't get three people to support it, and so I pulled it. Tyrone Nelson with the Henrico Board of Supervisors began pushing for a civilian review board back in June, just one week after the George Floyd murder. But after a five-month conversation, the proposal fell through when Nelson says leaders couldn't agree on the authority the review board would have. They couldn't call witnesses. They couldn't dig deeper. They were only able to use what um, was given to them by the police. And, you know, that's pretty much a neutered board before you even get started. So. Nelson believes unless the General Assembly passes legislation making citizen investigative review boards mandatory, localities will continue to wrestle with these roadblocks. The review boards really are about transparency and they're about accountability. And uh, that's why I support it. In the meantime, Dana Schrod, executive director of the Virginia Association of Chiefs of Police, says morale amongst the police force is low. We've had a barrage of legislation pushed through very quickly and have not had an opportunity to be at the table with the decision makers. She says in a survey of Virginia police chiefs, more than 90% said they would leave the profession if qualified immunity were eliminated. She adds that much of the police reform legislation passed is not well thought out without understanding of the job itself. And she says that's creating a chaotic environment for law enforcement. The last thing we want in our profession are bad cops. Uh, it's just the way in which all this was done without a lot of good planning, certainly without enough funding, uh, that has made it difficult to process all of it. It's like drinking out of a fire hose. Now, Richmond City Task Force working to create a police oversight review board is planning to hold a meeting via Zoom tomorrow afternoon at 630. In a tweet, they posted that they publicly invited Richmond Police Chief Gerald Smith, who they say they've tried to also reach out to privately.